State of California, the Honorable Judge Amanda Gomez presiding is now in session. Be seated and come to order. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? Fine. My name is Akeem Solomon, and I represent the state of California in the proceedings. 
We're at Gary Green Cakes. I would like to tell you the reason for which my family and my closing counselors have chosen you, the jury. We have chosen you to listen and determine the facts concerning this trial and come into a fair and reasonable conclusion. We feel that you are 12 good law abiding citizens who have a deep respect for our legal system. We believe in you and trust your judgment to give us a fair and reasonable decision in this case. You told us, shown us that you can be unbiased in weighing the facts and evidence. This means that you jurors can, of this case must not have any preconception concerning the outcome of this case. You must base your conclusions solely on the evidence shown to you. Now that you understand your importance to this trial, let's review your job. You will hear many testimonies, some untruthful and reliable, <coughs> unreliable. Some will simply try to build the characters of their witnesses. This is where you come in. I need you to listen carefully to find the truthful, relevant, and reliable testimonies by opposing counsel. My opposing counsel will try to build the character of Miss Ballard to make it seem that she is unable to have committed such a tragic crime. They may even try to persuade you by making it known that she is an exceptional athlete with a promising future. Please do not let this interfere with your decision. We will present to you, the jurors, four witnesses whose testimonies are reliable and very truthful. First, the poor victim in this case, Mrs. LaFrance, who was viciously struck down on the night of April 27, 1984, by Miss Ballard's car. The investigating officer in this case, Officer George Martinez, who cautiously followed the correct procedure of investigating this case, after quickly finding the car and driver which violently struck Ms. LaFrance while taking her evil job. Officer Martinez also discovered evidence on the car which is relevant and very important to this case. Now our foreign exchange student from Switzerland, I ask you to listen carefully to his testimony, Ralph Gabardi, who had never met the defendant in the city valley until he was introduced to her at a party and talked with her. When they left to talk in her car, she made a pass at him. He was confused and simply left not wanting to cause any problems because he had a girlfriend back home in Switzerland. Our most important witness in this case is our eyewitness, Miss Dorothy Franklin, who was standing in her carport with her great name and saw the entire accident. She not only saw the accident, she called the ambulance and saw the driver of the car. Not only once, but twice. Once through the front window and once through the passenger window. When she went back into her home, she wrote down, before taking her medication, wrote down the five digits of the license plate. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I would like to remind you that it is you who must listen carefully to these witnesses and determine which testimonies are truthful. It is your job to determine fact from fiction. Take your time, listen carefully to these testimonies, and you will see that the defendant, Miss Cindy Bell, is clearly, beyond a reasonable doubt, <coughs> guilty of the crime by which she is charged. Ladies and gentlemen, I remind you that you are the only ones who can determine and see justice done for this tragic crime. Is defense ready for their opening statements? Yes, we are, Your Honor. Proceed. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I would like to explain to you why I and my opponent chose you for this case. We believe that you, members of the jury, will listen with an open mind and make your decisions in regard to this case very carefully. At this time, I would like you to take a look at the defendant, Ms. Cindy Ballard. Please stand, Ms. Ballard. A caring, respectable athlete, one who is always concerned about others. And let I remind you that one is innocent until proven guilty. In presenting the case, People vs. Ballard, the defense will prove that Ms. Ballard is not guilty beyond reasonable doubt. The facts will show that not only did Miss Ballard not hit the victim, Miss LaFrance, but it was in fact Mr. Ralph Gabardi, a foreign exchange student from Switzerland. The evidence will prove that Mr. Ralph Gabardi was driving 
the Ballet Automobile, the night of April 27, 1984, the night Ms. LaFrance was hit. Our witness, the defendant, Ms. Cindy Ballard, will testify that on the night of April 27, 1984, she attended a party at Jill Cochran's house. At this party, Cindy met Ralph. They talked a little, became acquainted. Cindy, having a few drinks, felt a bit ill. She asked Ralph if he could drive her home, and he agreed. Ralph and Cindy, going out to the Ballard automobile, pulled out of the driveway onto the slippery road. When squealing around the corner, Cindy screamed at the sight of hitting the figure dressed in green. Cindy asked Ralph to go back, but Ralph just shook his head and asked for directions to her house. After reaching the Ballard house, Ralph pleaded with Cindy not to say anything because he could be arrested or deported and that would ruin his plans for school in the U.S. Cindy was so confused, she did not know what to do. She knew what had happened to Miss LaFrance and she knew what would happen to Mr. Gabardi if she was to tell of the accident. She did not know what to do. She wished her parents were there for advice. When about to call the police, there was somebody at her door. She opened the door to find Officer Martinez. You will listen to all witnesses, and you will see that each witness will be consistent with Cindy's testimony, all but Ralph Kabari. Jill Cochran saw Cindy and Ralph leave the party together. They went out to the car. Fifteen minutes later, she heard the car leave. Cindy was not behind the wheel. Barry Porter also saw Cindy and Ralph leave the party. But Ralph was a little concerned for Cindy, for he had seen Ralph drinking straight out of a vodka bottle and did not know if Cindy too had seen him drinking. He heard two doors slam and then saw the car leave the Cochran home. If you knew Cindy as well as her swimming coach, Ms. Narasaki knew Cindy, you would know that she is a very concerned and caring person. She sees her day in, day out, notice her behavior towards her people, and she knows that Cindy could not have left an injured person. Would somebody so caring as Cindy Ballard leave an injured person, or would somebody who had much more to lose? Being arrested, deported, losing the chance for school in the U.S., someone who was looking out for their own interests be, would be the one to leave that injured person. That would be the one to leave Miss LaFrance. Somebody like Ralph Gabardi. You will listen to all testimonies, and you will not need to find evidence to prove that Miss Ballard is guilty beyond reasonable doubt but Ralph Gabardi will be the guilty one, because Ralph Gabardi is the guilty one of this crime. Thank you. Order of the court. <coughs> Prosecution, are you ready to call your first witness? Yes, you are, Your Honor. Okay. You may approach the witness without permission throughout the trial. I'd like to call Miss Genevieve for France to the stand. Genevieve LaFrance, capital L-A, capital F-R-A-N-C-E. Hi, Ms. LaFrance, how are you doing today? Today, I want you to relax and direct your questions, um, direct your answers to the jury so they can hear you loud, please, and just relax and try to answer the questions as well as you can remember them on the night of April 27th. Um, can you show us, first of all, can the jury see the um, map okay? Right here. Back home 
on 22nd Street. Okay, is this the same route you always drive? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so you're very familiar with the route? Yes. Right. Can you show us the corner where you're struck um, by Miss Bellis' car? The corner in which I was struck was the corner of 22nd Street and Foothill Boulevard, at the, not even entering the crosswalk yet. Okay. Um, were you wearing, what were you wearing that night? A lime, a lime green jogging suit. Okay. Um, you also said you had headphones in your testimony, is that true? Yes, it is. Okay. Did this impair hearing at all? Um, no, it didn't. Okay. What was the weather like on that night? It was a slight drizzle. Okay. Okay. Um, what did you do when you came to the corner of 22nd and Foothill? Well, when, when I came to the corner of 22nd and Foothill, I looked both ways. I stopped at the corner at the crosswalk. I looked both ways, making sure there were no cars coming, as I always do. And I proceeded across the street when all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, comes this car screeching and bright lights from my right. And then what happened? And then as I proceeded across the street, I got hit by a car. <laughs> I didn't even make it across the street. So you to try to dodge the car? I tried to dodge the car, but it was too late. By the time I had seen the headlights, I couldn't do anything. Can I have a 20-second recess, please? Yes, you may. 20-second recess. During the recess, Thank you. 
Miss LaFrance, can you explain to the jury why you jog so late at night? Well, during the day, I help at, uh, well, I dance. I teach dance. I used to teach dance. I can't teach it anymore. But I used to teach dance at Bell Bellwether High School. And plus, I'm working on a book right now. So you dance so late at night because you're busy during the day? I jog so late at night because I'm so busy during the day. Okay. Yeah, that would be all. Are you ready to cross examine the witness? Yes, you may. Besides the color of the car, 
Well, I saw the driver of the car as the car was coming up. I could see through the windshield, the front windshield of the car. And as the car was leaving, I saw the, the person again as they were leaving. Okay. So you saw through the passenger window? Yes, I did. Is there anybody in the driver's seat? I yes, mean, there, in the passenger seat? No, there wasn't. Okay, so you saw the driver through the passenger side of the car? Yes, I did. So therefore, there was nobody in the passenger seat? Yes, there was, there was nobody the there. The um, I see. Um, did you see any definite uh, things about the person that was driving the Objection, car? Objection, Your Honor. It's irrelevant to the case. No. Not irrelevant. Go ahead. Overruled. You may ask for the question. Did you see what the driver looked like or what the driver was wearing? Yes, I noticed that the driver was wearing white clothing, and from seeing the driver through the front windshield and again through the passenger, I noticed that it was a female. Could you tell for sure it was a female? Yes, I could because I could see that her hair was long. Okay. <coughs> Did you get any um, license plate numbers or anything like that? Yes, as a car, just before the car left, when it put on its brake lights, I caught, I saw the first five digits of the license plate, which was Van 64. Okay, and that would, then what did you proceed to do? I walked over to make sure that Miss LaFrance was all right. After I found out that she was all right, I ran into the house, and I wrote down what I could remember of the license plate <coughs> number, and then after that, I called the, called emergency. Okay, and then what did you do after you called the emergency? I took an extra dose of medication. So you took the medication after you wrote down the license plate number? Yes, I did. Okay, so therefore it had no effect on your memory of the license plate number? No, it did not. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Did you go back outside to see Mr. Franz? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. I took a blanket out with me an umbrella to cover up while I waited for the police and ambulance to get there. Okay, how soon after did the police and ambulance run? They got there around five to ten minutes later. Okay, and then what happened? After that, after the they got there, I took um, Officer Martinez into my house and showed him the piece of paper with the license plate number on it, and then I told him what I remembered of the accident. Okay, so you told him what you knew about the license plate number. Did you tell him anything else? Yes, I told him that I had seen the driver through the windshield and through the passenger side of the car as it was leaving, and I noticed that it was a female wearing white clothing, and that it was an older model, pale blue compact car. Okay. 30 seconds. Yes, you may. 30 seconds, sir. <laughs>
Defense, are you ready to cross examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Please answer all counsel's questions with a yes or no. Ms. Franklin, do you wear glasses? No, I do not. Okay, and you stated in the direct examination that you take medication, is that correct? Yes, I do. Okay, in the testimony, you said you take it in the morning and in the night. Yes, I do. So, how could you take a second dosage when you're feeling nervous that night? Objection. So, wouldn't that make it three? That's irrelevant for the case. Overruled, you may answer the question. No, it would not. <laughs> Isn't it true, Mrs. Franklin, that it was raining that night? It was just a slight drizzle. And you state the driver was a female? Yes, I did. Okay. And you saw the driver through the passenger window? Yes, I did. And through the front window? Yes. Okay. Mr. Giovanni, where's his long hair line? How can you tell that it was her? You just assumed, right? Yes, Your Honor. She asked her to answer yes or no. Yes, um, sustained. Jerry, disregard the last question. At the angle you were at, couldn't it seem like the driver was in the driver's seat when actually she could be in the passenger seat? No, it did not. Have a real question. So, I'm going to ask this question. So, you just assumed that the driver was female? No. No further question. I just meant one a 10 second recess before she finishes up her testimony. Okay.
Ms. Ballard is being charged with hit and run under California Vehicle Code 2001 and 2003. This is the second day of the trial. Um, Bailiff, would you please swear on the jury? Jury rise. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. To do the best of my ability. To do the best of my ability. To be honest. To be honest. And conscientiously. And conscientiously. Listen to the evidence presented. Listen to the evidence presented. And reach a decision. And reach a decision. Based only. Based only. On the evidence presented. On the evidence presented. Your eyes were fixed on the license plate and not at the driver? No, because I watched the driver Objection, first. Your Honor, that was at two different times. The driver passed first and then she saw the license plate. <coughs> the mm -hmm. So you saw... That's um, overruled. You may answer the question. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Is it also true that your eyes were looking at the license plate and not at the driver? I was looking at the driver. Well, then how did you see the license plate? By luck? First looked at the driver, then at the license plate. Oh, so you can pass. So you can do two things at one time. Yes, we answer your questions. Okay. Uh, well, you may answer the question. Repeat it again, please. <laughs> Isn't it true that your eyes were looking at the license plate and not at the driver? During which time? During. The car only passes for one second. So twice. you. Can, oh, okay. But you only, isn't it true that you only had a second to see the car? Not really, because I saw it driving up, then I saw it again. But then it, it stopped and sped off. Isn't it true that you can only saw the car for a couple of seconds? No. Okay, may I have a 10 second recess? Yes, you may. 10 second recess. that you could not identify the driver of the car? Not her physical features, no. Then how can you say that Miss Cindy Ballard was the driver of the car if you can only see the profile of her face? Now, you're under oath. From her profile, I couldn't see Yes her. or no to my questions, please. What's your question? Yes, she's a resident of witness. Sustain. Jury, please disregard the last question. Thanks 
So, like I said yesterday, you assumed Cindy Ballard was the driver of the car. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you, Yana. No further questions. No. Two seconds. No, no. Two seconds. Prosecution, do you have any more questions? Oh, no. I'd like you to relax and direct your questions as loudly as possible to the jury. Okay. okay. What is your occupation? I'm a police officer at uh, the southeastern section of Bellwater, California. Okay. Can you tell us the first thing that happened leading to the case of People versus Cindy Bowler? I just arrived on duty and I got a phone call from the dispatch saying there was an accident at 22nd Street and uh, Foothill Boulevard. Okay, thank you. Um, what did you do when you arrived at the scene of hit and run? Um, I saw Mrs. Franklin over uh, Mrs. LaFrance, and the ambulance just took off with Mrs. LaFrance, taking her to the hospital. And I went into the houses with Mrs. Franklin to question her. Okay, what did she tell you? She told me that she saw the car coming up the street and that she had seen uh, a woman figure in the front window, and then as the car was passing by, after it hit Mrs. Franklin, she saw through the passenger window the same woman figure with white sweatshirt and blonde hair. Okay, did she seem, seem sure about the driver? Yes. Okay, and the car? Yes, she did. Okay, how did she describe the car? She said it was a small, blue, old, compact. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, did you proceed to question her after that? No, I didn't. I said thank you. And I went to the hospital. Okay, what did you do at the hospital? I went to question Mrs. LaFrance. Okay, um, did she have anything to say? What is she like? No, she wasn't in any condition to uh, be questioned. Okay, so what did you do then? Then I went out to my uh, patrol car, and I gave him the five-digit license plate number I received from Mrs. Franklin. Okay, um, did he give you any information leading to the plate number that Mrs. Franklin had given you? Yes, he did. He gave me ten possible numbers. Okay, did any of them um, lead you to any cars in Bellwether? Yes, one did. Okay, um, who did this car belong to? Steve Ballard. Okay, and that is Mary Kathleen Ballard's husband, right? Yes. And Cindy Ballard's father? Yes. Okay. Did you go to the house? Yes, I did. Okay, was the car there? Yes, it was. Okay, how was it parked? It was parked cricket and one wheel was on the grass. Okay, what kind of car was it? it was a, Objection, uh, Your Honor. Leave the witness. I asked what kind of car it was, Your Honor. That's not leaving uh, the well, witness. You may ask for the question. Okay, okay. Can you tell us what kind of car it was? It was a blue, <coughs> blue compact car. Okay, was this the car that Ms. Franklin had described to you? Yes, it was. Okay, um, what did you do next? I proceeded to check out the car. I put my hand on the hood, and it was warm. And then I went to the front of the car to check to see if there was any uh, dents or scratches in the fender. Okay, was there any dents or scratches? No, there wasn't. Did you find anything on the car? Yes, I did. I found a uh, green piece of cloth that was torn off as Mrs. LaFrance's driving suit. Okay. Um, does this cloth look familiar to you? Yes, it does. Okay, is this the cloth you found on the Objection, car? Objection, Your yes, Honor. He's still being a witness. Oh. Um, I'm a roller. Do you may ask the question? Is this the cloth you found? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. What did you do with the cloth after that? I put it in a small bag. Okay, what did you do with the small bag with the cloth? I took it, after I went to the police station, I put it in our uh, investigation locker where it stayed. Okay, when did you see the cloth next? This morning when I picked it up to bring it to the trial. So the cloth couldn't have been tampered with in any way? No. Okay, thank you. After you found the piece of cloth and put it in the bag, um, what did you do next? Well, I saw that there was a light on at the house, so I went to the door and rang the bell and then um, waited. 
Okay, did anybody answer the door? Yes. Um, Mrs. Ballard answered the door. Okay. Um, <coughs> let's see. <coughs> what was she wearing? She was wearing a white bellwether sweat, sweat, sweatshirt. Okay. Um, did you notice any other things about her? Yes, I noticed that she had alcohol on her breath. So. Okay. What did you do then? Then I, um, we proceeded into the kitchen so I could question her. Okay. Did you read her rights? Yes, I did. Okay. Did she agree to answer your question? Yes, she did. Okay. What did you ask her? Just, did you ask her about what happened? I asked her uh, what she was doing that night. Okay. She was. What did she tell you? She told me she was at a friend's party. Did she tell you, did she, you asked her about the accident, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and what had she told you? She told me that um, her car was that in an accident and that she was not driving it. Okay, and you said repeatedly she said she wasn't driving the car. Objection, yes. Your Honor, he's leaving the witness. Just stay, Jerry, please disregard the last question. Okay, um... What happened? Excuse me. You got a 10 second recess, Your Honor. Yes, 10 second recess. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Martinez, did you ask her if she had been drinking that evening? Objection, Your Honor. Hold uh, on. Judge, you have to get orders here before they should continue to question her. Some people, if they continue to talk, they should be removed by the bail. Okay, Your Honor, I mean, <laughs> Officer Martinez, did you ask uh, Miss Cindy Ballard if she had been drinking that Objection, evening? Objection, Your Honor. You're relevant <laughs> to the case. The case has to do with it. You smell alcohol on her breast, therefore, he has the right to ask. But the charges oh, are true. Okay, what did she say? Had she been drinking? Yes, she had. Okay. Um, hmm. What happened after you asked her if she had been drinking? She got uh, upset and she didn't want to answer any more questions, and she said she wouldn't ask any, answer any more questions after she went to sleep and had some rest. Okay, so she took you up on your Miranda rights, right? Yes, she did. Okay, what did you do next? Um, I surprised her and told her that. Wait, go ahead. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I told her that I had to arrest her and take her in for uh, hit and run and drunken driving. Okay. Um, what did you do next after you took her down to the police station? Then I told, asked her to take the um, <coughs> test. Okay. What did she say? She <coughs> said she refused until she saw her lawyer. Okay. And what did you tell her? I surprised her by telling her that she had no right not to refuse it, and that she lose her license for six months that she did. Okay, did you test her for alcohol? Yes, I did. Was she positive? No, she wasn't. Okay, what was her alcohol level? 0.04. Okay, about what time did you test her for alcohol? It was approximately about 2.10. Okay. Is it possible for Cindy Ballard to be drunk Objection, at the time? Objection, Your Honor. He's asking for an opinion. Sustain. Jerry, please disregard the last question. Can I have 10 second recess, please?
Officer Martinez, are you an expert at um, testing for alcohol level? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, so Miss Cindy Ballard was tested at point oh four, so she had had some alcohol. Yes, she had. Okay. Um, was it possible for her to be drunk at eleven? Objection, Your Honor. He's asking for an opinion again. Okay, wait, let me explain the reason. It's because he has now established the fact that he's an expert, so this is expert testimony. Before he did, he has sustained before, but we will at this time. Um, was it possible for Cindy Ballard to be drunk at 1130? Well, what does that have to do? Yes, me and the chief both agreed that it was possible. Okay, um... Okay, what did you do? Um, what happened after she took the test and she didn't come out positive? She uh, called Mrs. Narasaki yes. to uh, bail her from jail. Okay, did she bail her? Bail yes, her. she did. Okay, what did you do after that? I proceeded to call school teachers to ask them where Ralph Gabardi lived. Okay, did you find out the information you needed? Yes, I did. Okay, what did you proceed to do next? I went to Mr. Ralph's party department. Okay, was he there? Yes, he was. Okay. Um, uh, what did he say? What did you ask him? Well, when Mr. Ralph Kabari opened the door, he was wearing a towel, and I told him who I was and what had happened at that night. Okay. Um, what happened next? What did, how did he react? He, w he was very surprised, and he said he didn't know anything of the accident. Okay. Um, okay, did he, did he seem sincere? At all? Yes, he did. Okay. Um, um, in your testimony, you say he seemed a bit frightened. Why is this? Objection, Your Honor. He's leading the witness. Sustain, jury. Please disregard the last question. Okay. Um, what was his attitude? He was frightened. Okay, can you tell me why? I feel he was frightened because he knew that if Objection, he was convicted... Objection, he's asking for an opinion, Your Honor. Sustain, Joey, please disregard the last question. Um, all right. Um, so he was frightened. Yes. Okay. Uh, did he tell you how he got home from the party that evening? Yes, he told me that he did walk in the right. So he walked home from the party? Yes, he did. Okay. Um, all right, you said in your report that you thought it was just a little too easy for someone in Miss Ballard's position to blame Ralph Gabardi. Why is this? Because I felt that um, <laughs> in her position, being a such a nice person, as they said earlier, that she didn't want to ruin her reputation and that under the situation with Ralph that being a foreign station, she wouldn't have no feelings if he was gone out of the state and she would lose her scholarship for college. <coughs> no further questions, John. That'll be all. Do you guys ready to cross the time Yes, we are. We are Pepper print inept investigations by the police? Yes. Oh, so would you say the police does have a bad reputation for investigations? Objection, Your Honor, that was in the past. It's relevant to this case. Oh, okay. Overall, you may answer the question. You must speak loud and clear. So would you say the police does have a bad reputation of investigations? In the past, yes. How did Cindy appear when she got to the door, relieved and scared, or a little frightened? What would you say? Did, a, did Cindy appear frightened, scared, relieved when you answered the door? Frightened. frightened. Okay. Um, indirect, you said she 
was answering you in a defensive way, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Wouldn't you be scared too if you were 17, your parents weren't home, and a police officer came knocking at your door accusing you too? Yes. Okay. Then you arrested him, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. On the, tri on the charges of driving under the influence? Yes. And isn't it true that the, the, the um, charges were dismissed? Under that, yes, no. that our charge. Yes or no, please. That same morning, you received a statement from Mr. Gabardi, too. Judge, please instruct the witness to answer my question. Did ask answer yes or no, yes. Well, please answer yes or no to all counsel's questions. Yes. That same morning, you received a statement from Mr. Gabardi, right? Yes. And you said he didn't know anything about the accident? Yes. Okay. Did you smell any alcohol in his breath? Is it because you didn't check for it? Yes. Okay, but in your report, you said that you had, it was your job to check out every detail, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Can we have a 10 second recess, please? Mm -hmm. Yes, you may. 10 second recess. I had to come over here, that's why I did it. I'm getting too nervous. I'm getting too nervous. Okay, tell the story. Tell the story. and show you, shows you his wet clothes, right? Yes. Well, couldn't his clothes have gotten just as wet if he walked home from Cindy's? It's possible. And isn't it easy for a foreign exchange student to convince you, since he's not from this country, that he'd be innocent? Since he <coughs> would be deported. Isn't that true? Yes. I'll just your your We already, we already established that the automobile was Cindy's. Wasn't it true you just assumed that Cindy was driving since it was her father's car? Yes, Your Honor, calls for a conclusion. Overruled, you may answer the question. Okay, we already established that the automobile belonged to Cindy. Wasn't it true that you assumed Cindy was driving since it was her car? No. And weren't you trying to get a confession out of her? Yes, Your Honor, calls for a conclusion. Overruled, you may answer the last question. No. Okay. Therefore, you were not being fair and you had a biased opinion. Is that true? Judge, Your Honor, she's arresting our witness. Sustain. Jury, please disregard. No further questions, Your Honor. questions as loudly as possible and direct them to the jury. Okay. Um, I'd like the jury to know a little about yourself, so can you tell us a little about your background? Yes, well, I was um, born and raised in Switzerland and had a pretty normal childhood despite my father being an alcoholic. Okay. Um, can you tell us what brought you to the U.S., Mr. Gabar? I hope to pursue a career in medicine. Okay. Um, when did you arrive in the U.S.? January of 84. Okay. Um, you attend Bellwether High, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you know many people at school? 
Not me. Okay, um, have you ever met Miss Cindy Ballard before the night of April 26th, 1984 at Miss Cindy Cochran's party? I mean, no, I've Joker. seen her around, but I never formally met her. Okay, um, Mr. Gobardi, please tell us what happened upon your arrival at the party. Well, um, Jill Cochran introduced us, to, uh, introduced me to Cindy Ballard, and we danced a few times. She asked me to dance, and then she wanted to go outside because she said it was too noisy to talk. Okay, um, did at any time you drink straight out of the vodka bottle? No. Did you any time drink any alcohol at all? No, I don't believe in drinking. Okay, um, after you went outside with Miss Cindy Ballard, how did you enter the car? Well, she went around to the driver's side and then opened up the door and opened the passenger side <coughs> from, the, from the inside. And then I sat in the passenger side. So you got in the passenger side. Objection, he's leading witness. Sustain. Jerry, please disregard the last question. Now, the last question is where Matt repeated what he said. Um, okay. What happened while you were in the car? Um, we talked for a while and had a good time. And we were both laughing, and then suddenly she got serious on me. Okay. Um, what... Why did she suddenly become so serious? Well, she asked me if I ever had an American girlfriend, which kind of took me by surprise. And then I said no. Okay. <coughs> and then what did she say? She asked me if, I, you know, if I'd like to have one. And what did you tell her? I would. Why is that? Because I have a girlfriend back home in uh, Switzerland. Okay. Do you have any plans with this girlfriend back home? Yes, I do. Okay. What in kind of plans? Well, I plan to propose to her when I get back. Okay, um, about how long was your Sydney conversation? About 10 to 15 minutes. Um, Mr. Gabari, this is really important, so I'd like you to make sure the jury can hear you. Um, were you at any time driving Miss Sydney Dollar's car? No, I don't have a license in the United States yet, and I am not really familiar with the roads. Okay, were you in it at any time while it was moving? No. Thank you. Um, see what happened when the conversation was over? Objection, Your Honor. He's still leading the witness. Overall, do you may answer the question? What happened when the conversation was over? Well, I got out and I left because uh, she seemed really upset. I didn't want to upset her any further. <coughs> okay, um, did you shut the door? Yes, I closed it very lightly. Okay. That's not to upset her. Okay. Did you slam the door? No. <coughs> Um, did you go back to the party? No. I just wanted to leave as quickly as possible. Okay, where did you go? I went home. Okay, how did you get back home? Well, I started walking and then it was misting outside. And I started to become wet, so I jogged. Ten seconds. Yes, and she seemed kind of drunk. I smelled alcohol on her breath. Okay. Um, let's see. Approximately how long did it take you to run home? Well, I arrived home in time to... Well, the first thing I did was I went to the shower and hung up my coat, <coughs> and I turned on the TV set before that. And while I was hanging up my clothes, I heard the monologue to Johnny Carson. Please. So I watched that for a while. Okay. And what did you do after that? Well, it was pretty boring, so I put on a Bruce Springsteen record and then went to sleep about the night. Okay, um, could you please tell the jury, um, the path you took to go from Jill Carvin's house to your house? Okay. I want everybody to see the map, the jury. Yes. Okay. This is Cochran's house, Jill Cochran's house. And I went up here and jogged along the golf course all the way home. Thank you. Um, okay. <clears throat> Mr. Barty.
Marty, do you think um, Miss Cindy Ballard is an attractive looking girl? Objection, yes. I calls for an opinion. <laughs> Order in the court. Overruled, can I ask you a question? Yes. Okay, are you, are you or were you at any time attracted to her? No. Okay, thank you. Um, when around did Officer Martinez arrive at your apartment? Well, he came about, it was in the morning, he woke me up about. What time did Officer Martinez arrive at your house? Early in the morning? Yeah. Okay. What did he tell you? Oh, he told me uh, that there had been an accident. He asked me what I had been doing. Okay, what was your reaction? I was somewhat confused because I didn't really know anything about an accident. Okay, why did you think he was there in the first place? Well, I was a little scared because I thought he was going to tell me I had to go back to Switzerland. Okay. Um, had you done anything wrong? No. Okay, um... What are your feelings about being deported? Well, I'd rather be deported than hurt anybody. What did you tell Officer Martinez? <coughs> you had done that evening? Um, I told him I had gone to a party, stayed for a little while, and then jogged home. Okay, what else? Um, that when I got home, I hung up my clothes. I showed him my work clothes. Okay. And then uh, watched Johnny Carson for a while, and then went to sleep after hearing Bruce Springsteen records. I see. Um, Back to when you went home from the party, um, why did you begin jogging home? Because I didn't want to ask anybody for a ride because they seemed intoxicated. Okay, thank you. There are no further questions, John. Hey, friends, are you ready to cross the German witness? Yes, we are. Are you today? No. Isn't it true that you are from Switzerland? Yes. Oh, Judge, could you please instruct the witness to answer all my questions with a yes or no answer? Mr. Gambardi, please answer all counsel's questions with a yes or no. Okay. Isn't it true that you are a medical student? Yes. And if you got into any trouble with the police, isn't it true that you would be deported? No. No, it isn't. Have you lived in the U.S. for four months? Yes. And would you say that you know the streets of Bellwether very well? Not really. No? Do you know how to drive? No. You don't? Mm -mm. How old are you? I'm seven, 18. And you don't know how to drive? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, um, isn't it true that you were drinking straight out of a vodka bottle? No. Oh, you know are harassing the witness. I'm asking him a question. It's already stated in his Wait, wait, wait. Let the judge make a ruling before you start arguing. Oh, no, Roll, can I ask you a question? No. You weren't? Um, didn't you state that in your... Can I... Can I have a 10-second um, recess? <laughs>
Lombardi, you stated in your direct examination that your father was an alcoholic. Yes. Yes, and isn't that trait hereditary? No. You saw Cindy at the party, didn't you? Yes. And didn't you and Cindy go out to her car and talk? Yes. And didn't Cindy ask you to drive her home? No. No, she didn't. No. Did she offer you a ride home? No. Wouldn't you have rather gone home in a car than walk in the rain, since it is quite a distance from the Cochrane house to your house? Objection, Your Honor. Hong Kong question. Mm. Uh, world, uh, you will continue the question tomorrow. This court will adjourn until tomorrow morning, um, January the 25th at 10.15 a.m. I will again remind the jury not to discuss the case with anyone to watch the news or to read the papers. Thank you. Now I got a question.